Chronic pain is hard to live with, hard to explain, and difficult for researchers to understand. Pain amplification syndrome is a new piece of this pain puzzle. We spoke with Dr. Andrew Schulman of Children's Hospital of Orange County to understand this type of chronic pain. Pain syndrome is a condition where um, a patient's sensitivity to pain is abnormal. They begin to experience normal sensations and normal experience as something that triggers a pain signal. Typically this problem is, is more common in older school age children and in adolescents. We have some surveys that show that as much as 15 to 20 percent of school age kids have experienced significant musculoskeletal pain and if we move into the adolescent high school population uh, in surveys that can be as high as 40 to 50 percent. When we're learning about the history of a particular patient, what we often find is that there was some trigger, some triggering event that leads the pain problem to become a more chronic issue. In some patients this can be uh, a traumatic injury, a sports injury, a fracture. In some cases it can be an illness, a viral infection um, that has been disruptive to a patient. Sometimes the trigger is psychological stress. In some patients, a medical illness is the triggering factor. So a classic patient would be a 15-year-old Caucasian female who um, is an active athlete, is an excellent student, maybe is a little bit of a perfectionist or a little bit of an internalizer, very serious about school, active in activities. And um, this patient um, probably experienced musculoskeletal pain in the past, maybe because um, this patient has very flexible joints. Interestingly, many of our patients have a history of having had growing pains uh, in the past. And then this patient begins to have a number of symptoms, headaches, uh, abdominal pain. When they begin to have their periods, maybe they have very exaggerated cramping and menstrual pain. Um, dizziness, if they get up quickly from sitting down or laying down. Um, maybe even discoloration, numbness of the hands, um, a feature of Raynaud's phenomenon. Um, and these symptoms sort of occur gradually and start to become more disruptive. And then there are psychological stressors that tend to make this problem worse. Um, in some patients, stress and anxiety are a big problem. When the pain becomes more of an issue, the patient's sleep starts to become affected. We know that Restful sleep is very important in the way our neurologic system processes pain. If people are sleep deprived, we don't process signals normally. And Dr. Schulman talked about possible treatments. The core therapies are physical therapy for aerobic exercise. There are benefits of regular cardiovascular exercise to our perception of pain and to the, the nervous system. Massage is very helpful for all of our patients. It helps to desensitize that abnormal pain sensitivity. And then uh, working on sleep is extremely important. And then the last piece is psychological therapy. And I do recommend that for patients, regardless of whether a psychological stress was an initiating trigger of their problems with pain, when we start to talk about therapy and how we intervene, um, psychological therapy is extremely important. And in some instances, that needs to be uh, on a family level and not just for the individual.